My family may not be perfect. We may not always see eye to eye. But one thing we do agree on, we are for sure family. Yeah, this is Maddie Kitchen. And um, I'll be showing y'all how to cook some green, collard greens, some sweet potatoes, stuffing, and turkey. I'm gonna tell y'all the ingredients you're gonna need and everything you're gonna need to do it with. But this, this, this cooking is for, for people who say that I'm gonna eat all I want because a January, New Year, I'm gonna lose 30 pounds. I watch each leaf at a time because I'm scared of worms. And some people say the more worms, the more meat. But I don't believe in that. So when I get to washing each one, I'm gonna take and fold them and cut them in small pieces. Do you any advice on how to uh, wash the greens properly? Yeah, I, this is how I wash mine. Now everybody will do all of this. But I just wash mine deep at a time and just cut them up and wash them again. That's how my mama taught me. She come to the country. Okay, I take and put a couple of leaves together and fold them so I can cut them. You know, it's easy to cut them. It don't matter how you cut them because when they cook, they're going to all look the same. But the seasoning, to me, when the smaller greens are, it's better to season. Make you want to slap your mama. The reason I chose collard greens because most people don't cook kale for Thanksgiving. They cook collard greens. But to me, kale, in fact, kale is the most healthiest green you can eat. It's number one. So that kale, and it's so tender, it cooks so fast, so you know, you don't have to worry about things. But make sure the meat that you're cooking it with, it's, uh, you know, season it with some ham hock, some salt pork, some pork, I mean, some neck roll. Make sure the, the meat is almost done before you add the uh, Kale, because it don't take care of the water. It's a good 40 minutes to cook when it takes probably about an hour and a half. It's going to take these about an hour and a half. Mm. This is my first time ever being filmed, and I feel pretty good because you know why? I know what I'm doing. And like I said, you cook these greens like I tell you, especially when you ain't got no man, bring a man you want over. You might get them with these greens. <laughs> So it's, these are keep a man greens. <laughs> this, this keep a man green. At least keep him coming back to eat them nuts and stuff. Hmm. Yeah. y'all hey I'm back now because I'm trying to put these greens on they wash and I'm gonna, them, I'm gonna cook them in this pan right here I'm gonna cook them I'm gonna try to squeeze them all in here now the first thing I'm gonna do is get my seasoning get my seasoning put on put on the greens the only thing I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use pepper the black pepper so the reason I'm putting it on top so when it's steamed it's gonna go all through it. Because I just kinda when it get half done, I'm gonna taste it and then I'm gonna do the same thing I'll taste and see what I need to put in there. Sweet baby ray. Hot sauce. They got they make barbecue out of this barbecue sauce too. So I'm gonna put this on there just to get that little hot taste. These greens are gonna be some country greens now, you know. They're kinda hot. They can go by if you cook them, they'll be too hot. Just don't put you know, put a little bit on it. In fact, you don't have to put it on. Let's season them up. Okay, that's good enough. That's a little bit on top. Because once they get done and start cooking, you're going to taste and see what you got to put back on. So I'm going to put a little vinegar. Now this is vinegar, regular vinegar. I'm putting a little vinegar in there. I'm going to put a little jalapeno pepper in there. They're, these greens will be kind of spicy, so, you know, that's how I cook mine. Just a little bit on it. Get that little spicy taste. 
Okay, that's enough of that. Normally I put fresh garlic, but I didn't uh, pre uh, prepare them, so I got the uh, used garlic. Garlic on it. Put just a little bit in there. Okay. Now I sprinkle a little uh, sugar in mine, just a little bit, just a little bit. So, cause once it get done and start cooking, I'ma, uh, you know, I'ma take and uh, taste it. Fresh onions on it, now, you know, just, it don't matter what size they are, cause they're gonna cook away, it don't matter. Just put some onions on there. Okay, y'all, I got salt, pepper, vinegar, some jalapeno peppers, and uh, sugar, and uh, garlic. Pepper, garlic, and some hot sauce and salt. Okay, I'm putting that, I got that in there. So the next thing, I'm, the reason I'm putting this on top is because I wanted to season all this right here stuff I put in there, the onions, the peppers, the hot sauce, the vinegar, salt and pepper. I want all of that to hit the green so it can season the green as it cook. It's gonna steam them and all those flavors that I put on top will go in. Now I'm gonna get ready to add to meat. Here's the hammocks, I'll be doing the hammocks. Put them in. There might be a lot of ham hocks, but I love ham hocks. Uh, salt pork is on my, I'm putting that in my greens. Um, my grandson-in-law gave me this for a Christmas gift, and it come in handy, and it's real granite, so I use this to cut. And if the salt pork you saw earlier, this is how I cut it. And this knife is very sharp. It's easy to cut. And I'm gonna let, I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it fry so I can have the grease, the fat for the uh, greens. And then I also make me a sandwich too. <laughs> I love that. And this is a good frying pan because all I want to do for is fry and get me some grease. And I put the oven on about 360, so I have it on 360. And when I get crisps like bacon, uh, that's how I get the most grease. So I'm going to put that grease into my greens when I start cooking. So it's kind of, if you want some country good taste and grease, you need a little grease. And this, for me, this is the best form of grease I, I know of and, and season my greens. And the ham hocks, ham hocks and this goes together for me. I don't like, some people season with neck bones. Some people season with um, with a, a smoked turkey. I mean, a lot of things they do and beef, some of them season with beef. But me, if you want some country greens, like I said, it's gonna put the power on you, but just this time stick to your New Year resolution. Remember when I cooked the salt pork? This is it right here. I should have had more green, but what I'm gonna do to get the taste of this right here, I'm gonna take some of the water from the ham hocks that I cooked and pour in here. Now here's the water from the ham. I'm pouring this so I can get a little of this taste. Okay, now I'm gonna take these ham hocks, pour some of this water, because greens don't, you shouldn't cook green with a lot of water. And the best thing, if you're not used, if you don't have, if you have pots that's kind of stick, you don't care what you do, once they cook and stuff in the water, you can take these greens and you can put them in your oven and they will cook. You ain't got to worry about touching them. All you got to do is uh, stir them occasionally. You know, you stir them a little bit. I lay them on here. So that's, I want this to go in the greens too. So I'm going to take this uh, salt pork, the grease from in the water. I'm going to pour this on top of it too. Because this is where my grease was and I wanted this grease, but it kind of cooked away. That happens a lot. But all you have to do is just take the water, put the meat on top too. Okay, now this is ready to go on the stove. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna put some foil on top of this and close so I can seal the pot. I want all the steam to stay, all the steam to stay inside the pot. Okay, I got them covered up. And, uh, they're gonna shrink down. And I'm gonna put this top on top of it. This is what I'm gonna cover. I'm just trying to let them, you know, dissolve and melt down so I can put this on. And I'm gonna cut the stove on, on a, a, a little high until they start cooking. I just want them to start cooking. I think a good cooking little green is an hour and a half. So 2.30 would be one hour. Uh, Three o'clock would be an hour and a half. Sometimes you have to give it uh, that uh, extra two hours, but they're gonna cook and all. Once they start cooking and getting tender, I'm gonna put them in the oven. So I, uh, if I got enough juice and enough water, and I won't put them in the oven. Okay, now the greens have cooked down. That's why I put the aluminum foil in them. I'm gonna give them a good store so they can start cooking. See how they're cooking? Yeah, I don't want them to burn. Once they start cooking, turn them over and stir them up. Let that season go in. Once they get a little tender, 
I'm gonna put, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna taste and see what I got to add, what else I got to put in. But most of the time I get it right the first time, not all the time. I'm gonna stir these. I'm kind of awkward with my left hand. I failed and hurt my arm, so it's kind of awkward. It's hard to, to stir with just one, I mean, maneuver. Feel, this arm kind of feel a lot of handicap. Okay, we'll cover them back up. Let them cook again a few minutes. One more part is for the people that the moisture in. See these greens, honey? One thing about collard, take them, you gotta get them, honey. Once you get them like you want to, they're gonna look good. They gotta cook. Take, it, take some time, they cooking good, so I ain't gotta worry about putting these in the oven. See, some of them, this one has a piece of turn. And I'm gonna taste these and see what I got to put in them. My sweet potatoes, I don't have to put nothing in there. They gonna be good. Got that meat coming through there. That's what make them taste good. Stir it up. I don't like a lot of water in my greens. Oh, they look good, y'all. Ain't ready yet. Let me taste it, okay? Where's my little cup? I'm a little cup. Baby. And you know when you're cooking greens, please don't put a lot of water in there so the greens will be floating in the water. I can't eat greens. I can't eat those greens when they float in the water. I like for my greens to be, you know, just like this. I taste them. They look bitter, so I need to put some sugar in it, some salt. And let them do their thing because they haven't cooked no more in about a good 45 minutes. I got to just let them do their thing. Okay, yeah, I'm washing, cutting the potatoes. This is the worst part of the deal. And I kind of get little, I like the small potatoes because this, when I went in the store, I, I prefer the ones real small and yellow because those are the sweetest potatoes. And they make the best candy yams. Uh, the small potatoes, big potatoes, they dry it out. If you ever bought one, you see when you see a potato like when you cut it and it dry it out, don't have no juice in it, honey. You got your terrible potato. Yep. So I'm gonna cut them up like this, take the peels off of them, wash them real good. I enjoy cooking only like holidays. I, I really enjoy cooking on holidays. But I'm, and <clears throat> see how it is? I did this knife is sharp. I, I cut mine in circles. You can cut them long if you want to. The reason I'm cutting them in circles because they're easy to cut. And it's a sharp knife. You have to be very careful. I cut them about, i say, my, maybe two, almost two inches. Not quite two inches. About an inch and a half. Okay. Cut a few of these potatoes. The first Thanksgiving dinner. Don't be worried, because you know, even me, and I don't cook Thanksgiving dinner, dinner for about 50 years, and I'm still, I get a little nervous at times, so you heard me stutter just now. <laughs> but anyway, you just, you know, everybody be have that fear. Just, you know, cook, your, cook the best of your ability, and that's all you gotta worry about, because honey, sometimes they complain, and they'll say, those taste better than theirs. Okay, y'all, I guess I'm gonna start on my yams, and these are some different yams. These are old-fashioned yams. And the only thing I put in my yam, I talk it to you as I put in. Right now, I'm gonna start with the sugar. Plain sugar, not brown sugar, white sugar. So I'm gonna put this one cup, I'm gonna put this over, and it seems like it's gonna be a lot. And it is gonna be a lot. Like I said, it's, for, it's not for people who think they ain't gonna get no weight off of this. It's for people to kick back and enjoy. I put, once I cook this, I might put a little bit more, and I don't know. So that was one cup, and I think maybe a little, just a little bit, just a one full cup. So the next thing I'm gonna pour on there, pure vanilla extract. No invitation flavor, cause I mean, you're not gonna get the same taste. I use extract, and it's expensive, but that's what I use. I'm gonna pour it through here. See, now I, I think I paid in the commissary. I think I paid, what? $4 for this little thing, for what time? I'm gonna pour something, we need a lot of that. I mean, so it's kind of expensive. I got a little bit, once I taste and see if I'm gonna put in the more, that's, remember that sugar and extract. 
pure vanilla. This is what really makes um, uh, uh, a sweet potato, old fashioned sweet potato, because a long time ago we didn't have all of those things, but once they learn what nutmeg is, it's really just a good flavor. It's, I, I don't like all spice, I just like it. My sweet potatoes, I just want some plain uh, ground uh, nutmeg. So I'm gonna put some of this in there. Not, I don't like cinnamon in mine, so brown sugar. Just in there. Cause I might have to add some more of some of this stuff, but I'm just putting it in there. Okay. And I'm gonna put something like honey. You know, this honey is honey is the best thing you can put in your food if you want if you want to taste a little sweet honey. I'm gonna squeeze a little. I didn't put too much honey, and I'm just gonna give it a little taste because we already got that. So this will give a different taste. Okay, remember sugar, nutmeg, and vanilla flavor, and just a tap of honey. And you remember my land of lake butter? That's all I use. That's all I use. I'm gonna put about cause this. We're gonna make it too because all of this. Everything in the sweet potatoes is, is, is uh, kind of rich stuff. It's good. It's not imitation. It's just good. That's why my potato, sweet potato tastes so good. I'm gonna give me some. This one give me. Uh, these are half a stick. Half they come in half sticks. But I'm gonna put about a one and a half a stick of butter in here. It's rich. Very rich. It's gonna taste real good. Okay, I'm gonna put the top. That's all I need to put in my home. Put my brown sugar. I don't put none of that other stuff in there. I don't put, I just, all I put is butter, a little honey, sugar, nutmeg, and vanilla extra. Okay, now I'm setting this on the stove. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna let it cook because it's gonna cook in this pan. I love this pan, you know. To me, when you're cooking sweet potato, it's best to cook it in a skillet like pan because you can watch it and you know you ain't got to worry about stirring. You can look at it. Okay, I'm so I'm putting it in here. I'm cutting it on. I'm gonna let it get first. I'm gonna get it a little warmer, then I'm gonna cut it down. And after it get halfway done, I'm gonna taste it. I'm gonna get. You should have just some little cups and a spoon so you can taste all your food. I'm gonna taste it and I'm gonna see what else I got to add to it. That's all you need. Some good sweet potatoes. Okay, y'all, let me let my uh, sweet potato cook a little bit. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to taste them a little bit. You know, I'm going to taste them, see how, what I need to put on them. I'll get you a little cup like this or something. I'm going to taste them. I'll see what I got to go. They're getting there. I've got to add a little bit more stuff in there. They're getting there. Okay, y'all, I went to the commissary and I got me a butterball turkey. I washed it. You gotta wash them real good because most times butterball turkeys are a little cleaner than the other turkeys, so I kind of choose the butterball. But then all that butter, I don't know about all that butter they say they put in because I actually you know, put the butter in mine. Anyway, I actually washed the turkey. I'm gonna already wash mine, but I'm gonna wash it a little bit more. And you have to clean, if you never cooked a turkey before, you need to clean on the inside because on the inside you have that dead blood in it. So you need to just take and clean that out good and rinse it out good. I kind of pre-wash mine, so I don't have to spend all that time washing mine. But I try to clean the inside. And you go right out the neck, you put it out the whole thing. You're going to throw it down there and it's going to go right out the neck. And you should get a good clean. Clean. Let it wash off. Drain all the water. And this pan I'm using here is. Normally I cook this. This is time. This is where I cook my uh, turkey, and I cook it in this pan. But I will be making homemade stuffing, you know, all from scratch. And this pan right here, the the, uh, the thing that makes good stuffing, you got to have the broth from the turkey. The broth that you bake it in, you have to have it in. Ooh, this thing is good. And this is a butterball turkey. Gives it and deliver in the neck. Here, here's a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've already pre-washed it. 
I'm going to use this for, for backup because sometimes I make a lot of stuffing and I don't have enough uh, juice for my turkey, so this is the backup. That's enough water. I'm going to set this on the stove until later. And when my turkey, I always, uh, I put salt, garlic, and pepper. I mean, you can put seasoned salt, you can put anything you want to, but this is going to be enough and I'm going to let you know why I laid on this. But I, this three things is all I need. So I sprinkle some salt in it, you know, it's just, you know, it's just measure. I don't measure stuff, I just pour it. Garlic in it. Put a little pepper. I need some more pepper. And that's kind of stirred up. Mix it real good. Put more pepper. So just mix it up with you know, what you're gonna do with this right here. The how you season the turkey, most people don't know. You always go to the breast of the turkey. And you take get some the seasoning, mix it good, and you take and rub it in the breast. You take and rub it in the breast of the turkey. Rub it in real good. And so that's what the season that's gonna season the whole turkey. And you don't have to have put, and sometimes just for a little color, I might sprinkle a little, just a little bit over mine, just a little bit of this season on top, just to give it, when, it, when it's baking, it's gonna, it's gonna make it look a little better. Just put a little bit. Now, okay, that's, that's enough of that. Most people don't know, I take a, I take a red delicious apple, or, or gala, any kind, this is not red delicious, it's just an apple. I already took the other side out of it. I'm gonna take and wash it up. And you stick it in the middle of the turkey, right in here. Right in there. And this is what this apple gonna do. This is gonna make this turkey so soft. Somebody told me that and I tried it. I couldn't believe it. And I also take some celery sticks and put in it. And the stuffed celery stick. I just sit, lay them in there and season it. And I'm gonna season the turkey. That's what I'm going to put a little onion. I think I might put a little onion. But most time I just put a little celery in there. Okay. I forgot to take my butt out of there. And so this is called a butter ball turkey. But you know what? I washed it. I ain't seen no darn butter. So I'm going to help. I'm going to help them out. I put about these little ones. This is a half a stick. So I put about, maybe about two sticks. I mean a whole, one stick in here. Maybe one and a half. I stick it right in this turkey. Because this is what's gonna, this, this and this. I might put some onions, a little onion, but I think now I'm gonna stick with the celery. So anything you wanna put in there, because they're gonna take. And this butter, this apple and celery is gonna make this stuff so good. And yeah, I mean, it's gonna be a good turkey. Put that in there. I'm just gonna put this one in there. Just because this, I like butter. I put, um, uh, Lamp or lake butter in there because you know that's what kind I like. I mean, I, I, they probably got some better than this, but I swear on this butter. I love this butter. I just get the plain butter in the shirt and get the and hold them in there. I just get to see this. I love this butter. It's, it's just butter, it's not salty, unsalty, just plain butter. And I use this in my, in my turkey. I stick in here because it's turkey, it's called butterball. And uh, okay. And I'm going to take it, just for measurement, I'm going to put a little, I don't know whether I put just a little salt on it, pepper, just, you know, so it can taste good. You don't want turkey real salty. And so I'm going to wrap this up, this is about it. I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to let this cook. And the, the, to make really good stuffing with this, the, for here, you, you wrap it up, look at the package, and if the package said three hours, let it cook at least three hours. And then you don't uncover, just take it. So this one normally has a thing that sticks out, but I don't uncover mine. I think this is three and a half hours, so I'm going to let it cook three and a half hours on 350. I'm going to preheat my oven. Okay, now I'm ready to, I let I preheat my oven to 350. And I'm going to put the time on it because it's late now. And I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm put the time on and let it cook. Y'all, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up good. Cause I don't want no air to get in here. 
I'm gonna let it cook as long as it says cook. Basically, keep it on a little too short. If you keep it on uh, the hours they said most time to cook, it takes that long. And if you're gonna make some stuff, you're gonna be making stuffing, some honey, you want some good stuffing. You better take and let your stuff cook in hours and then open up so you can have a lot of stock. And if you sometimes if you don't have a lot stuff, you got the back up with the gizzards and stuff. Ready to go in the oven. Set my timer, let it bake about three and a half hours. Uh, clean up my kitchen. This is my turkey I cooked last. I cooked, put it on early this morning. And you know, this is this how I like for my turkey. Look, just like this right here. And it's not pretty, but it's gonna be so. It's gonna taste good. And uh, it's how soft it is. But anyway, see how the legs fall? And you remember that apple and that celery and onion I put in there? I just want, I don't want my turkey to look pretty. I just want it to be so tender you can pull it off. But see, look at that. That's how a turkey is supposed to be eggs for Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, like that. And I know it tastes good because the apple, the celery, and stuff. And so that's, I just wanted to show it to you. This is the stock I'm going to use for my stuff. And see all that juice in there? And this is going to be good. Mm, 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 mm. It's good. It's so tender and stuff. See, most people think a turkey looks pretty. It, it looks very pretty, but it don't taste good to me. It just looks pretty. You cut it, it's dry. Because I'm the type of person that don't like white meat. So I can eat this white meat. I really don't like white meat. But this turkey will be good. I taste it seasoned good. I put the salt in the breast, the salt, the pepper, and the onions. I'm, I'm sorry, salt, pepper, and garlic. I put it, I season the breast with it. And the other part, and the and the, bre and the bottom of it, I put the apple, the celery, and some onions. And that's that's all you need for a good turkey. They said the apple, they said the apple make a turkey tender. And I really believe that. I really believe that. And I also put some butter in this was a butterball turkey, but I also added extra butter in there. So it's perfect. This turkey is perfect. Hey y'all, like I said, I'm getting ready to make the cornbread for the stuffing. Most time I, I use the Martha White uh separizing cornmeal mix. You see how much I put in. I don't measure stuff out. I just pulled enough. This is enough for this pan right here. So this pan, I'm gonna cook this right here. For this right here, I always, um, I use buttermilk for my cornbread, which is better buttermilk. It's never, you know, this came out the commissary, and I just, it don't matter as long as it's buttermilk. I use a little buttermilk, but I don't use white milk. So this amount in this bowl right here, I'm gonna use three eggs for it. I can, I, I'm so used to cooking cornbread, I don't really have to measure. You should always put a little sugar in cornbread, but don't put a lot, especially for uh, uh, um, stuffing. I'm putting this in just to give it a little, you're gonna take the tang out of it and just give it a little, just a tap of sweet, uh, a sweet taste. So I'm gonna put the, uh, I'm gonna put the three eggs. For cornbread, you always put a little oil when you make it. Just a little oil in it, you know. You know so I use the vegetable oil, great value. <laughs> I normally, I normally use Crisco, but I, this, was, this was a good sale, so I got it. I put just a little oil. You saw how much I put in, just a little bit. I'm gonna pour the butter, look, and I pour it in gradually, so I can, you know, won't, so it won't get too runny. Let's start with it, and I stir it up pretty good. That buttermilk really, really makes some good cornbread. But you remember the long time ago, people used to cook you some good cornbread? And take their butter and take some buttermilk and pour on top of the cornbread. That was some good eating, but that's country, honey. Y'all young people don't know about that. Hot cornbread and some buttermilk. Okay, you know, you shouldn't stir it too good with it a lot because you can make it kind of but on course if you stir it a lot and make it like a cake. Pan. Here's my pan. I'm taking put some grease on it. 
and the oil in it so it don't stick. Just so it won't stick. Just a little bit. I'm going to cover the whole pan. Okay. This cornbread will be just, just good to eat without making stuffing out of it. I'm going to put it in here. In the bowl. And the reason I don't need too much uh, cornbread, it's enough, but because I got a tip pretty big, and because I'm going to use those breadcrumbs too. The little breadcrumbs. I'll show you what kind I use in a few minutes. I get ready to make the stuff. Okay, let's do it like this. Let's shake it. All that grease is getting on. That's okay. Like I said, this is a fattening meal. This is going to be good. So I got my oven preheated to 350. So I'm going to let this cook about 35 minutes until done. And let it cook for about 35 minutes. Okay, y'all, I'm getting ready to do the vegetable for the cornbread that I put in. That's the stuffing. I'm going to do the vegetable while that's cooking. We'll put a little green peppers. It don't matter how good size they are because they're going to cook in the microwave till they get a little tender. And then they're also going to cook in the stuffing, so it don't matter. I got enough, that's about enough green pepper for the size of turkey and that, and that, uh, and that uh, cornbread. So put the onions in here. No matter, they big, but it don't matter. Onion, I love onions, so I put a little bit more onion. And what really, to me, to me now, this is celery that makes a, make good stuff and some good stuff, celery. Because celery has that taste that when you put it in cornbread, it tastes good. So this seems like it's a lot, but you know, it's about average. That's what I use. So I'm going to take this butter, Lana Lake. Some good butter. I hope y'all give me Lana Lake, because I'm sure if I go famous, I want something from you because I'm advertising your butter. So I like manna lake like I said. I'm gonna put it in here and I'm gonna set this in the microwave until you know I'm gonna check on it. I'm gonna put the top on it. And so I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna let it cook. This, this is gonna cook for about, about five minutes and then I'm gonna open it up. Well I'm not gonna close it. I'm gonna take it kind of partial open and let the steam come out of it so it'll be ready. I'm gonna put it in here. Say I'll put it on three minutes. Okay, now that's cooking. Okay. That smells so good. I don't want to cook too much more than this right here because it, I want these, these, this, these vegetables to cook inside the stuff and to the, give it its flavor. So these are onion, green pepper, and celery. So I'm going to stir it up. It's almost ready. Right? So I'll say about four minutes in a regular microwave, like my microwave, about four minutes. Close it all the way up. Let no air get into it. Not quick. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, so that's look good. I got to let it cool off. Look like Jiffy, but it ain't. It's just some old Martha White cornbread with some buttermilk, eggs, and shortening, and a little sugar. So, you know. Now the hardest part to me, and it's really the simplest, is taking this turkey out of here because this turkey has cooked, it's really tender and everything. So I'm gonna take the first thing I'm gonna take out is all that stuff I put in to make it taste good. The apple, so the apple ain't good, and the celery. To make it taste good. And the butter is already in the side. Look at that. That's a, I mean that's what you call a turkey. I don't other dry turkey I don't like. So I gotta pick this turkey up, transfer this turkey to this pan. And the reason I'm doing that. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to make my stuffing up in this pan where all the juice is. So I'm going to pick it up as I could. It's going to fall apart because this turkey. <laughs> 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 that means it's good and tender. That's all it means. I'm going to put it right in there. Take these parts. All the stuff's about to fall apart. Because when I eat turkey for Thanksgiving, I don't want no pretty turkey just sitting up like a 45. And it don't taste like nothing. This took it. So I'm gonna leave this little part in there for my stuff. I got, got quite a bit of juice for it. My
Okay, I'm getting ready to mix up my stuffing. And some people just take uh, and make stuffing with just these right here, these crumbs. Uh, what is this, pepper uh, ridge form. Uh, this is a classic herb season, it's herb season. And some people just use this for stuffing, but you know, and make it that you just put some water in it, blah, blah, blah. I use it dripping from the turkey, but I'm gonna put cornbread in mine, because that's good. This cornbread is good, homemade cornbread with buttermilk. It's so soft, I'm gonna put it in here. And mix it with that. See all this juice, and this is from the turkey. I'm going to taste a little of this cornbread inside. I tell you, it sure look good and coming out good. The buttermilk is what really makes some good cornbread. I made it with buttermilk. Break it up. Sometimes I used to, you know, this, this juice right here that I boiled over there with the uh, neck and stuff. I used to just take and mix my flour my cornbread up and use that for water. You know, that'll season it good too. You can do that. I chose to do it like this time. This time I wanted that buttermilk flavor. Let's see how it tastes. Take the celery and onions from here, the microwave, and pour all this in there. Let's, let's have it to the flavor. And this one, remember, this is gonna cook again. The onions, they're not gonna be there. When I cook the stuff, they're gonna cook again. You cook yours like this, you'll have you some good turkey. You will never cook it, no way but like this. Some people put sausage. I don't understand how somebody gonna put sausage and stuff. In. All that different stuff. And I'm gonna use these breadcrumbs to make it thick. See these breadcrumbs? Put these in. I gotta make it up the wetness. See these are seasoned too. Get it like this. I'm gonna put my season. Only thing you need to put in here, and that's the truth, because it's real season. They're gonna it's portrait season and um portrait season and um pepper and the breadcrumbs. All y'all cook this for Thanksgiving. For all of you to cook it, and I want you to give me some comments of how it tastes. If you follow did what I told you to do, it's gonna be good. Okay, I'm getting it almost the consistent that I want. Then I'm gonna put the seasoning. in it. See how these peppers? You can't when they cook it. You're not gonna see all these bits. They so got to cook again in the oven. Who ate, ate my stuff and they, they can be mad because they ain't got none here. They are not here to get some. Sometimes I this broth, the camel, chicken broth, I just put a little bit in here to just to season it a little bit. Just a little bit. Because I don't have to use that back up. Here's the stuff I cook. I don't have to use that. Okay. 
It's about a good consistency, I like it. I'll put my pepper. Mm, my pepper's kind of low. Pepper. Okay. My portrait season. That's all you need to put in here. That's what I'm gonna make it. This portrait season. That's all you really need for old. This is old fashioned stuff in there. This ain't none of that modern stuff. I wish you could smell it. it smells so good. Maybe they'll get something on the phone where you can smell. To bring it through the phone. Now, and now it's real important on this right there because you see how it's gonna look good when it's put. The most important part on this, you have to taste your stuff in now. You can't just whip up a recipe, I mean a magic uh, a recipe and it's gonna come out right. So I take it, put it in my hand and taste see what I have to do. It's good. Maybe add a little more pepper, it's pretty good. That's the end, end of it. I can't cook nothing else with pepper today. Okay. Put the porcher seeds in there. Some more porcher seeds, it tastes pretty good though. Okay. I'm gonna tap this in here since it gets a little flavor. Like I said, I need a big kitchen. Now, I'm going to say this one time. Again, this is my last time seeing it. This is, for, this is a, a, a kind of rich, but I cook it very rich. It's not for a person to think they can have all these health problems and eat this like this every day. Christmas and Thanksgiving is okay. Twice a year. Okay, now. Okay, I, I don't like my stuff smoothed out. I like it kind of choppy, like, because it looks, you get a better effect when you're cooking when it's kind of choppy. So they're just smoothing it down like it's a cake. And it looks more pleasing. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, you know, sometimes I do it different ways. I'm going to take this turkey and set it in here. Because I'm going to cut it around some parts. Like, I'm going to try to keep some of the whole parts for people who like it. Their whole part, but this turkey is so, it's good. I taste it. It is so good. I'm just trying to put it in here. It's going to so I come off the bone. You know this one. Mm -hmm. Turkey don't taste good to me until it come off the bone. I mean, just, I'm just going to lay it all in here. And the most meat is going to be, people who like dark meat, this is dark meat. It don't look all that pretty, but it sure don't taste good. These are dinners they used to cook and invite the pastor to come over and eat all they eat everything up. And they went they went home happy. <laughs> they came every Sunday for a meal like this. Okay, it don't look that pretty, but I'm not a good decorator. Pretty good cook. Okay, now this is ready to go into the oven. Okay, I'm ready to put that in the oven. How that, how that look, y'all? Okay. I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it cook. And you cover it up because it'll brown. You'll be surprised how good it'll brown as long as your oven is hot. And I cover it up and let it cook for about to brown. Okay, just enough. Just enough. And it's gonna go back in the oven for the last time when it come out, we're gonna be ready to eat. While I'm over here, let me take a look at my greens. we be about ready to go. So I have some greens are cooking up with ham hocks. And... So they're cooking the ham hocks, the lead all the way through. They're not done, they're not quite done yet. So I'll take these bones, after I get done, I'm gonna take these bones out. Because we're going to be meat, the ham hocks, the salt pork, and cook some. So let me taste it for the last time. Okay. 
Let me taste and see what I need in it. We need to cook about a little, no, 30 more minutes. I'm not tender, they should be. And that's gonna be it. Let them cook until they get a little more tender. And honey, that's it for that. Them greens are good. Now I'm gonna look at my sweet potatoes. Taste them for the last time. Mmm, this is jumping. I can tell the way they smell. They smell good. I don't like when to break up too much, but these, they don't matter. It's not how you break up, how they taste. I'm going to taste one of these. See, to me, the one that has the, the less flavor in them are the ones that, you know, the, the yellow one has the more, so I'm going to get one that's kind of orangey. Taste it. I think, I know I ain't got to put nothing in this, but that is good. These are jumping. This is what it was, y'all, all that cooking. And if it don't look good, it damn so tastes good. Happy Thanksgiving and also Merry Christmas. This is a warm welcome from the bottom of our hearts from the Foreshore Family Channel. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. Until next time, see ya.